Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Lord children, I'm with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My favorite line in any of our liturgies in the Book of Common Prayer is, all of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. This line comes from the end of our burial rite where we are commending our beloved one to the, a closer presence with God. It's a statement of hope that the entirety of our lives glorify God, that even in death we praise God and sing the joys of God's hope and love and what is to come. I've always felt that Monday Thursday embodied this feeling, that the gospel we read today speaks so beautifully to this prayer in the Book of Common Prayer. Jesus, more than most, knew when he was going to die. He knew that his death was soon. Yet in his final hours, he did not try to flee or hide or to seek some sort of revenge. 
He sought to show the kingdom of God, one built on love and service. And both acts that Jesus performs on this night, the washing of his, uh, of his disciples' feet and the Eucharist, are emblematic of this ministry of the new co- commandment that Jesus gives us as well. Our gospel beautifully shows us this song that Jesus was making at his end. Being so moved at dinner with his disciples by the love he had for them, he humbled himself by washing the feet of his friends. Although this was a common custom to wash a guest's feet, the host would never wash them. Never. Jesus ignores this societal custom and dictated customs that, would prop, that showed the proper way of acting in society, but he showed us instead how God expects us to act. As the teacher and leader of his disciples for these three years, Jesus sought to show the mantle that he was giving his disciples to take on, that of being a servant. The disciples felt uncomfortable with this action. Peter refuses to see Jesus humble himself to such a lowly state. He did not want Jesus to wash his feet. He felt it should be his job to wash his master's feet, not the master to wash his. But Jesus rebukes him. Jesus rebukes his pride. That Peter, he told Peter that he would have no share in his kingdom unless Christ could wash his feet. Unless Jesus served Peter, Peter cannot continue as one of his disciples. And I think Jesus is kind of showing the true nature of servant leaders. We tend to forget the two-sided nature of serving. That serving others requires one to accept the service of another as well. There's a humility in it. That a true act of loving service makes the served feel empowered to serve and to reciprocate it. People can be quick to show their generosity in serving someone, but can so easily refuse the generosity of another, just like Peter did. True service, though, is contagious and an empowering action. It makes the person served want to serve in response. Refusing to let someone reciprocate that act of loving service is denying the kingdom. Peter's refusal of Jesus' act of loving service meant that he would not have a share in what God had to come in the kingdom. No share in the kingdom of God at all. This act of loving service was so important to Christ that he even washed Judas' feet. Jesus washes Judas' feet even knowing that Judas was about to betray him. He knew his death would be from Judas handing him over to the authorities. Jesus was probably hurting from this, but he still loved Jesus enough to spend his last few hours washing his feet. Judas isn't even the only one that would ultimately betray him. Every disciple deserted him before he was crucified. And Peter will deny him before the night even ends three times. All of these acts that Jesus did for his disciples were deliberate acts of love, knowing that everyone else would struggle to reciprocate them. Jesus continued to show love by instituting the Eucharist. Jesus gives us the greatest gift of his love in communion. He gives us himself. That at the meal, the bread and wine changed into the body and blood of himself. And in that, we become like Christ. We become the body of Christ, quite literally. That Christ loved us so much that everything we celebrate in the sacrament is all about his self-giving love, his agape, the giving fully of himself. And that's what allows us to even attempt to follow the commandment that he gives us right at the end of his life, that we will love one another as he has loved us. 
And that's the beauty of Maundy Thursday, that before his darkest hour, he showed his friends the world he hoped and longed for, the same hope that God has for all of us, that we love one another as God has loved us. That is the song Jesus sang to his grave, and hope that we will sing it to ours.
Let us kneel or bow our heads and confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Would you please stand? The peace of the Lord be always with you. Would you please exchange a sign of Christ's peace? I'm so happy to welcome you to Christ Church Rye for this service um, to observe the beginning of our triduum, the three holiest days of our year, tonight's Maundy Thursday service. And um, I just wanted to offer a, a word about the, the rest of our observance of the triduum and then Easter Sunday. So as you'll see in our um, bulletin, tomorrow's Good Friday service begins at noon. And together we will observe the seven last words of Jesus. So it's a, um, a beautiful sort of rhythmic mosaic of music and silence and prayer and uh, meditation. And um, it will just be beautiful, glorious. And I hope you'll join us for that. On Sunday morning, Easter Sunday, we have three services. The first is at 6 a.m., and it will take place um, at Oakland Beach, right on the water for the sunrise. And then we have two full choral Eucharist services in, here in the sanctuary, one at nine and one at 11. But back to tonight, at tonight's service, we use a very special Eucharistic prayer. Um, it's unceremoniously titled Prayer D, um, but it is adapted from the liturgy of St. Basil and it dates back to the year 379. And it's a prayer of great solemnity. It's authorized for use among um, more Christians in both Eastern and Western traditions than any other um, Eucharistic prayer. So tonight, as we pray this prayer together, as we remember the institution of the Last Supper and our sacrament of Holy Communion, we do so in unity and solidarity with Christians um, all across the globe. So tonight, um, as we remember that, that first communion and that last supper, um, we will use real unleavened bread, which means our protocol for communion will change just a bit. If you would like to receive, and all are welcome to receive, simply come forward in a single line and open your hands, and you'll receive a morsel of bread you may either eat the bread and then sip from the cup, or if you would like to dip the bread into the wine, please use the shallow bowl that's designed for that purpose. Also, gluten-free wafers are available to any who need it. And now, my sisters and my brothers, ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light, inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and, rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. 
recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share in this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church, Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give your glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. and cause the punishment. <laughs> 